Hello beauties, welcome back to Beauty Within, where we chat all things skincare, self-care and healthy living to find our Beauty Within. Do you wake up every morning looking like you pulled an all-nighter? Even worse, like you just walked off the set of something like Ghostbusters in a horror movie where they casted you like Ghost 1, Ghost 2. And no matter what you do, you just can't seem to get rid of these dark circles and puffy eyes for good. Plus, now with people wearing masks everywhere, it's no wonder that the eye area is getting the most attention and focus. So what do we do? So you know these days on the days that you find the willpower or you just have to go out to like a groceries or something and you see people on the side of the street, all you can see are their eyes. Yes. And then from their eyes, you paint a picture of what they look Who like. Who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how dating goes these days. <laughs> it's potluck. Anywho, if you've watched our previous videos on eye creams, then you'll know that lifestyle, genetics, hormones, and all these other factors do play a big part in the way that the skin around our eyes can look. With that in mind, we're going to spend today satisfying your curious minds on all things eye skincare. Yes, and we'll start by going over the main indicators when picking out different eye creams or eye products because you can see there are different types and this will include one, the texture of it, two, the ingredients or actives that can help target these stubborn problems. And as always, we pull together some products that we do believe is worth the investment. And some of them aren't even that much to begin with. No. Yes. And we'll break that all down because cost is a thing. And finally, That was so Aussie. No, yes. Yeah, no. No, yeah. Yeah, nah. yeah, yeah. Nah. Nah, yeah. Nah, yeah, 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 nah. What is it? <laughs> is it yeah or is it nah? <laughs> yeah, nah. Is it is no nah. or is it yes? Nah, yeah is yeah. Nah, yeah, nah. <laughs> so it's what it ends on. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button for more content and share with your friends, family, puppies, cats, so they can all stay up to date with skincare facts and tips. It's actually so cute when you guys tag us in your stories and your cats Kitty. or doggies are watching along with you. We love it. So anyhow, let's get into it. Just a quick recap from our previous video, the eye area is quite fragile and thinner compared to the rest of our skin, about 40% thinner to be exact. And another thing to note is that under our eyes, we have fewer oil or sebaceous glands, which means that it lacks the moisture. So this coupled with the fact that the skin is much thinner and delicate, it can appear quite dull, dark, dry, sometimes wrinkly because there's no sustenance for it. <laughs> for these exact reasons, we see plenty of eye creams and similar products in the skincare market that caters to this specific area of our face. So the question you might all be wondering is, do I then need an eye cream or an eye serum or one with a funky tip or like a little ball? Like what do I need? We don't want to say you absolutely need it because some of them cost a lot, a lot of money. Many, many pretty pennies and they essentially work to moisturize your eye area, which is what your moisturizers do anyway. So why bother investing in another product that does the same? Yes, and if you watch a lot of like other dermatologist videos, a lot of them do say very similar things that like it is essentially a moisturizer that pairs back on active ingredients because of the fact that it's very sensitive under the eye. So I think it's like important to understand what you're trying to deal with, right? So for me, I don't have puffy eyes. I have kind of like more dark. Over time, I've realized that the eye creams that market like dark circles never really worked in the way that they promised. It was more a lifestyle thing. To me, eye creams are more of like a self-care and hydration because mm -hmm. now I realize as we edge towards 30 that it does get a little drier. Like overall, my skin has gotten a little more dry, so I need to hydrate that area. Plus it just feels good during the day and at night. And also eye creams I think are important if you use makeup. Mm. Yeah, to make it nice and plush. And not crease. Yeah. Creasing is super nast with concealer. <laughs> what about you? I think with time, especially if you're constantly reading your skin, you know what it's like at its best. Yes. Or when we're younger. So now that we're a little older, I do find that at night, or in the morning if I don't moisturize properly that I do get creases around my yeah. eyes. And when I do moisturize, it does lessen it. 
because mm -hmm. it's nice and hydrated and plump. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say also that it's like an essential part of my routine, but I do kind of like sprinkle it throughout, just depending on what you're doing that day. All that being said, we also found that if you're facing concerns like dark circles, puffy eyes, or even aging skin, eye creams or serums can be beneficial at targeting these conditions to a certain extent. Of course, many of these concerns can be due to lifestyle and genetics, but specific formulations and ingredients have proven to be beneficial. So if you're interested in using an eye product, we have two indicators to help you find the best of the best, texture and ingredients. To put simply, the thicker the texture, the better it is for nourishing very dry or aging under eyes. But for oilier skin types, thicker creams might not be a good idea. Although your under eyes don't have as many sebaceous glands, they can still get clogged and even lead to milia, which are tiny white bumps from excess keratin buildup. And even for my dry skin, if I use creams, eye creams that are too thick, I do mm. get milia as well. We say this as a principle, but also it like once again comes down to you guys, right? Because yeah, yeah, as Ro was saying, she has dry, dehydrated skin, but some creams are too thick. Mm -hmm. Whereas like for my oily skin, sometimes I enjoy those really luscious, yeah. thick eye creams and it doesn't get clogged. So with that said, you can break it down into three types. There's eye serums, eye gels, and eye creams. And that goes from the lightest consistency to the thickest. So you can kind of think of it just like a moisturizer. For eye serums, these products contain less oils, meaning they can allow the ingredients to better penetrate into the skin, thus targeting specific concerns like dark circles, wrinkles, puffiness more effectively, hence serum. Mm, yes. <laughs> then another one is eye gels. And personally, I think like the serums and gels can have very similar consistency, but the gels to me seem a little lighter and once again, less oily because it functions better at relieving puffiness due to the lightweight cooling and refreshing feeling that it leaves on your skin. And if you prefer to apply eye products in the morning or you're prone to milia, then this option is the way to go. And if you have an oily skin type, this might be a better option since they're lightweight enough to use every single day. Yeah. And we find these ones are often paired with that little nub yeah. at the it's top. It's so cute. It's yeah. Like, Self-care. And then there's eye cream. They're usually thicker in consistency, much like heavy moisturizers or lotion, and they're mainly used for delivering hydration and nourishment. You can think of these cream textures working best maybe for nighttime routines or those who experience real dryness, flakiness. You don't know why it's kind of crumbling around <laughs> that eye area. So if you do have more dry or mature skin types, then you'll find the creams might be more nourishing and does the job a little bit better than the serum and gel buddies. Just like skincare, right? Any vertical, there's so many different options. There's so many. Even within the cream, there's so many different types. Yes, you can have lightweight creams, fluffier creams, and like super dense. dense. <laughs> where like you have to scoop it out and you have to be. really like work it. Yeah. We found four ingredients that are touted to be the best for all of our eye concerns, be it dark circles, eye bags, aging skin around our eyes. So let's take a closer look. All right, so starting off with... <laughs> Thing. <laughs> Starting off with caffeine or green tea. So in many of the eye products you'll find, the ingredient caffeine comes in the eye cream as like a brightening agent. And as of right now, after doing some research, there aren't many studies that measure the actual effectiveness when it is formulated in these eye creams or serums, but we did find some information on the actual ingredient itself and what it can do. So here's what we found. Caffeine, when applied topically, has vasoconstrictive properties. In other words, you're looking at something that tightens the blood vessels, thus reducing any of that puffiness and discoloration caused by swelling. So what gives us that darkening is actually you're seeing through to the blood vessels. Because your eye skin, eye skin. Eye skin. <laughs> is it eye skin? Yes. <laughs> because the skin around your eyes yeah. is so thin, you're seeing the blood vessels. <laughs> yeah. It's actually very similar to the lips. The reason yeah. why our lips are red is because you can see the blood vessels. So same with the eye. And different <laughs> people will have different thickness under the eye, which is why maybe like your friend next door doesn't have dark circles because their skin is like maybe slightly thicker or their blood vessels are less prominent and thick. Thick eye skin. Thick eye skin. Thin eye skin. <laughs> it's like, you gotta grow thick skin. You gotta grow thick eye skin. 
How does one do that? <laughs> and just a note, if your pigmentation is caused by anything other than swelling or puffiness, for example, dark circles passed down from your grandmama, this ingredient will not help as much. Yeah. Because it's genetics. Yes. Much like your daily dose of coffee, topical caffeine has potent antioxidants that can help to reduce signs of aging and protect against free radical exposure because it's the same thing as when it's formulated in like a moisturizer or your serum, right? We'll get to some products in a bit, but another caffeine and antioxidant rich ingredient that we see a lot is green tea and black tea, both made from the Camellia sinensis plant. There's also a specific catechin found in green tea known as EGCG, when put together with caffeine can help reduce puffiness and dark circles and calm any inflammation. So let's start off with some product recommendations so that you guys can understand the planes of caffeine eye cream, starting off with the Ordinary, which is a brand that we all know is very effective and affordable. So if you're just getting into eye cream, I think this is like a great place to start to see if it actually does anything for you. So this eye serum is a serum and it claims to reduce pigmentation around the contours of your eye as well as dark circles and puffiness. It's suitable for all skin types. You can use it at night or in the morning. And it has one of the most concentrated amounts of caffeine in eye creams that we've come across or like eye products that we came across with caffeine being one of the top few ingredients. Yeah. As a second ingredient. Yeah, it comes up as second. Yeah. Compared to other products that are, you know, either in the middle or towards the end of the ingredient list. So with this one, I feel like when it comes to caffeine, just my personal experience is that it does give you kind of this like subtle instant gratification mm -hmm. where especially if you couple it with like a cooling mechanism, your darkness can kind of fade away for five minutes. But if it's like severe dark circles, it's not going to like get rid of it. But when it comes to caffeine for it's temporary. me, it's temporary. It's like a shot of espresso. Yeah. And then moving on to the inky list, which we have here, they also have their caffeine eye cream. And it's funny because they say it's an eye cream, but it really is like a serum or a gel. Ooh. It's one of those ones that just glide over yeah. the face. It's like a gel cream. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Ordinary was much more serum-y, like watery. It smells very inky, AKA doesn't smell like, like anything. anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when you work it in, it does kind of like become a lightweight lotion. Mm, it does. Cream. So this is their Caffeine Eye Serum. So on top of caffeine, there's also Matrixol 3000. Sang that song, I love you, 3000. <laughs> and it helps boost collagen production and reduce the appearance of fine lines. Yeah. Peptides are a great like anti-aging ingredient. So if you're dry, if you have mature skin, if you want something still a little bit lightweight, I think this is great. It's just a little more creamy compared to the serums. So there's that one. And then there's a new one that came out from Good Molecules, which is the Yerba Mate. <laughs> Yerba Mate. <laughs> I think it's actually Yerba I think it's Mate. Mate. But when I read it, I'm like, the Aussie comes out. Yerba Mate, wake up eye gel. <laughs> This one is also a really affordable option. It's around $6 and it's another soothing eye gel that helps to revitalize, re-energize, tired and puffy eyes. And that I can say is really true when it comes to like gels and serums because they're so light and you just feel refreshed. You know, this like coldness around it. So the thing with Gold Molecules, as we kind of discussed in previous videos, is now they're kind of listing all the ingredients out there. So if that's something that you appreciate, you can actually look at all the ingredients. So for this one, the Yerba Mate is actually a leaf extract and there's 0.4% of it in here. And the tree is found from South America, which delivers those antioxidants as well as the polyphenols to protect from things like UV rays. And I think if you have any type of like hyperpigmentation, UV damage is actually really important under the eye because yeah. it needs a lot of protection. The difference with this one is that it's in that foil packaging. You know how like you squeeze stuff out and it stays in that form? Oh, it's like an art tube. Yeah. Like a yeah, paint yeah. tube. Yes. Mm. Now moving on to another quite affordable and great option is the Sephora Collection Hyaluronic Eye Cream. This is one that we got sent sometime last year and I feel like it's just a beautiful moisturizer. It's like no free if you want something to hydrate, to nourish your dry under eyes, it's not going to change anything in terms of like a discoloration or anything, mm -hmm. but you just want like nourishment, yeah. this does the job. 
So on top of the caffeine, it's also got the hyaluronic acid, which you'll find everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps to plump, increase moisture, which is really important for preventing aging, sagging, dry eyes. So the three we just mentioned were more affordable eye creams that contain caffeine. Now these next two are two of our favorites. Yes. They're a bit more expensive. It's the Fresh Black Tea HLA Eye Concentrate. So this eye cream is part of their black tea line that Phil and I just, just fawn over because yeah. it smells delicious. It does. I think there's it's the, my favorite. Yeah, there's the Instant Perfecting Mask that I used to love and that now you really love. That I now currently don't know where it's gone. <laughs> And I think what adds to the price of this one is that the ingredients include the black tea complex, which is fermented black tea. And as we know with any type of fermentation, you're actually drawing out a lot of things like amino acids and it makes it easier for the skin to really absorb that ingredient. And then it's also got noni fruit juice, which is known to help retain and increase the moisture in our skin, therefore improving the overall appearance and brightness. And we also got recently sent another new up and coming product with this ingredient, the noni fruit. So it might be the next it yeah. ingredient. I mean, it's been around for a while. I remember getting it maybe 10 years ago when yeah. I was very into health and wellness. Mm. And I was Googling like superfoods and foods high in antioxidants. And it was this noni fruit drink, like concentrate. And then you just dilute it with water and then you drink it. It's supposed to be one of those oh. like really cleansing, healthy, kind of like apple cider vinegar, but has like different benefits. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Ingredients all make their like cycle of popularity yeah. and fade out and all that. A little tip is also how heavy handed you mm. can be. So although it's creamier, you can still use it if you have like oily skin, you just use less of it and it yeah. works better in that case, because yeah. then you don't go through it as yes. quickly. And as with any serums, eye creams, gels that we just mentioned, it's best to apply it with your ring finger. And then what I like doing is I like warming it up, especially if it's a bit thicker of a cream, in my fingertips, and then lightly swirl it around. Yeah. I like to kind of just tap away too. And whatever excess, you can actually just drag it over. I like love lightly. dragging it down here for yeah. my smile line. Yeah. So on to its lightweight cousin. Ah. Moving on to the serum. It has the same black tea complex as the cream, but instead of noni, it has three other interesting ingredients. So there's peptides that we know is really good for firming and helping just plump up the skin around our eyes. There's also goji fruit extract that's high in antioxidants and uji tea extract. Uji tea is a type of green tea from Uji Kyoto. So you can think of like the difference between the two. This one's more like a boost of hydration because it is that like it's jelly. Like yeah. And it comes in a pump, which I also appreciate because I feel like it just keeps the active ingredients a little fresher. Whereas like sometimes people also don't enjoy like yeah. pots. So between the cream and the serum, which one is the leading contender? And when do you choose which one to use? It's kind of how I approach when to use different facial moisturizers. When I want a little more like plush, lush protection, then you want something a little more creamy and enveloping and the friend of your face. Yeah. And then when it's like summer gel, always like pairs hand. It's like the water gels for the yes. eyes. For skincare, you might know that retinol, retinoid vitamin A is an amazing ingredient for smoothing and evening out fine lines for a youthful look. So if you have crow's feet and fine line around your eyes, retinols got you. Got you, boo. And as you know, it's an ingredient that can do many things like stimulate collagen production in the skin, increase the cell turnover process, and make your skin appear glowing and radiant. So since the skin around our eyes is naturally thin, it's one of the first areas that show signs of aging. One culprit along with age is constant movement we make with our eyes from smiling, squinting, and rubbing our eyes. So naturally, this eventually depletes our collagen production and produces fine lines. Mm. But hey, you know, I think it's worth it. Just living. Yeah, live your life. <laughs> Smile. Oh my gosh. And since retinol has the ability to reach deep into the skin and stimulate collagen production, it can help to smooth out those lines and thicken the skin in the dermis layer where we need it. But the thing is, your typical retinol product that you apply on your face might be too much for your eye area to handle, or like too intense. Yeah. <laughs> it could be the one causing the fine yes. lines. <laughs> so that's why finding an eye cream with retinol can really work wonders 
changes. Since it is targeted for the eye area, you're less likely to experience any drying, peeling, or other unpleasant effects that are associated with retinols in different skincare products. Imagine your eyes peeling and flaking like your cheeks or your nose would Dude, it's like would be scary. Self-made eczema on the yeah. eye. Oh my God. All right, so starting off with the affordable options, the Inky List has the Retinol Eye Cream. And this one is suggested just to use at night in the PM because of the fact that it has retinol. So it's just safer. It has a Vitalise, which is the stabilized form of retinoid compound. And there is a slow release formula, much like, you know, micro encapsulation. So it reduces any like uh, potential of irritation that's associated with retinol. I also remembered a, a tip that like, when you apply your eye cream, you don't actually need to take it all the way up to the, the what do you call it, that wet water line. line. Yeah. Yes, because it will travel up itself. Next, we have the Peach and Lily Pure Peach Retinoic Eye Cream. This is also a nighttime eye cream. It has a retinoic complex with Bakuchol, which is a natural and gentler alternative to retinol. There's also rosehip seed oil, which as we also know, naturally contains transretinoic acid that helps to promote cell rejuvenation and helps the skin look brighter and the wrinkles less prominent. And then there's a beta carotene garden salad on your face with carrots, mangoes, spinach, broccoli that's all packed with beta carotene and antioxidant that's a precursor to retinol to help preserve signs of aging. And what sets this one apart as well is the brightening effects of ferulic acid with the nourishing vitamin E complex to really just like wrap your under eye and give it that self care that it didn't even know it needed. So we'll get more into niacinamide and vitamin C in a bit, but this just, this one has it all. This does you have it You got your all. vitamin A, B, C, and a garden party. And a garden party under the eyes. There's also green tea. <laughs> Now moving on to Glow Recipe, and they have the Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Sleeping Mask. So as we know, avocado is full of those essential fatty acids and is nutrient dense, also containing the antioxidants. So that's there to really nourish the under eye, but then there's also the encapsulated retinol that helps with slow delivery again for firmer looking plush skin without causing irritation. There's also niacinamide, which helps with brightening and coffee berry that is packed with antioxidants. And of course, a little bit of caffeine. Just whenever I think of the word coffee berry, it's like, oh. <laughs> Like a, like a cherry, but like a little coffee. The red yeah. caffeine berry. This one, I remember using it, is a little thick for my liking because I think this is very nourishing. So if you have like mature skin, if you're looking to plump up fine lines, it could be more in your like alleyway. This was my go-to eye cream for a couple of months mm. when I didn't really use ice, ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> so moving on to another shining star ingredient. Ding, ding, ding. We have the golden standard when it comes to all things brightening. And this is the lovely vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antioxidant well known for a number of benefits like reducing dark spots and other forms of hyperpigmentation. Because it's also found like in, you know, for our serums and moisturizers that the vitamin C can penetrate into the skin cells, therefore helping with hyperpigmentation. So yeah, if you have like melasma around here, it could also really help to break that up as well. So as we might know, if you're a fan of vitamin C, typically for the face, Vitamin C serums work best at a concentration between like 10 to 20%, but for eye creams, it's likely you'll find that there are lower concentrations of vitamin C formulated in the product. Or with gentle or stable derivatives with tetrahexyldexyl ascorbate to prevent irritation, but in any case, we highly recommend you pair your vitamin Cs with SPF because if you do not wear sunscreen with your vitamin C, it's just gonna be photo incinerated as soon as you step out the door. Yes, basically it's like Thanos and when he clicks his fingers, the vitamin C goes whoosh, like it, it's dissolved. So the first eye cream that we have is the Brighten Eye Eye Cream from Inculus. Ooh, and there's the metal tip. Yeah. Wow. So this one's beautiful. This one does come with that metal bud on the top, which makes the application really nice and smooth, helps with puffiness, helps with calming that area down because of the oh my cooling goodness. effect. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. This one's probably my favorite of all the Inky List ones. So in terms of active ingredients, there's something called the Brightenol 
with 2%. And this helps to brighten the overall like complexion under the eye and even out any discoloration or skin tone. There's also a slight reflective quality that's due to the mica mineral at 1%. So this really does help in refracting light and give you that kind of soft focus effect where it looks instantly like awake. Hence why I feel like if I was to get any of yeah. the inky list, this is probably the one. And I think the fact that it comes with the metal tip and just putting it on my hands for those like five seconds, like my left hand is, it's like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> like the whole experience is yeah. just a little more uplifting. Just so relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Next, we have Sweet Chef's Turmeric and Vitamin C Booster Eye Cream. So if you guys don't know, Sweet Chef is the little and more affordable sister to Glow Recipe. So what makes it different to Glow Recipe is Sweet Chef uses all vegetables while Glow Recipe uses all fruits. So that's so cute. It is. Yeah. And this cream is... Oh, it's so smooth. Wow. In here, there's turmeric, which contains antioxidants to help brighten and improve skin complexion. And one just interesting tip and fact, do not ever put pure turmeric onto your turmeric because there's so many peoples and memes where their faces actually turn bright yellow Dude, it after the mask. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great little option there. So as we've mentioned in many, many of our previous videos, niacinamide is one of those superstar ingredients where it does the mostest while being the most friendly and pairs yeah. well with almost every other ingredient you have out there. And it also isn't as fickle and prone to photosynthesizing and what is that word? Oxidizing as yeah. vitamin C. So I would say like vitamin A helps with the anti-aging aspect. Vitamin C is the brightening and niacinamide, which is vitamin B, is a little bit of all, mm. but just in lesser degrees, yeah. but it does that. And one of my favorites is actually, jumping straight into the products, is the First Aid Beauty Eye Duty Niacinamide Brightening Eye Cream. And some of you might think that, you know, mica being an ingredient is more controversial, but it's because of the reflective qualities that it gives that does give that like awake, you are actually awake, it's pearlescent, it's really beautiful under the eye. If you don't wanna wear concealer, but you want that kind of like bright and peachy look to make it look like you got rest, this really does work and I personally love it. So on top of the niacinamide as well as the mica, there's also pumpkin seed extract, which is a botanical extract that helps soothe, depuff, and regulate blood flow. There's also the hydration superstar, which is sodium hyaluronate, as well as caffeine. So a lot of these skincare ingredients are paired with each other. Yeah, you'll see them like repeating all the yes. time. And then there's, you know, like we can't cover everything, but there are other ingredients like snail peptides, you know, mm. like snail mucin we talk about all the time is really great for hyperpigmentation, for brightening, and it just has that very unique texture. So this, that's not sticky. Yeah, that gives you so much, um, it's like a, oh, I love this texture. Is this a cream or a serum? This cream, eye cream. Mm, it feels like a very lightweight serum though. Mm, true. There's one from I'm From, which is a brand that you guys love, we love. They have the ginseng eye cream. So whenever you see anything with ginseng, the active compound is the ginsenoside, which helps with the collagen promotion, the anti-aging aspect. And this is also just like another beautiful formulation. So silky smooth. Wow. My goodness. <gasps> tappa, tappa, tappa all wow. over. So I personally, these are the consistencies that I love. It's more yeah. creamy, but like spreads really easily. So smooth. Yeah. And this one contains 3.65% of a six year old red ginseng extract. Yeah, so I'm From is known for just highlighting. It smells really ingredient. sweet too, like naturally sweet. And then another one that is probably the thickest of all the ones here that we mentioned is the Naturium. They have the multi-peptide eye cream. This one is dense. Oh yeah, this is one of those creams that you have to dig out. Or it's one of those ones that like you you want to work into your fingertips and then it really breaks down to be like a luscious eye cream, but it's definitely thicker than the other ones. It is very hydrating. It's like a cream cream, like a facial cream. Mm. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, just really think of eye creams or serums as less potent versions of the 
serums or the mm. creams that you would apply onto your face, especially if they contain active ingredients like vitamin A or vitamin C, because if you were to just put like your 10, 20% serums, like facial serums around your eye, I think some, it won't be pretty. Yeah. And you might actually just cause more trouble for yourself yeah, long term. More irritation. Yeah. So just ask yourself, is it hydration? If it's hydration, then look for something like a gel or serum. If it's fine lines and wrinkles, then vitamin A and vitamin C. Cream, really thicker work. creams. Yeah. Yes. So ending on today's video. What did you learn you today, Belle? <laughs> I volunteer myself as tribute. I will I will go first. One thing that I was re-reminded of is that life constantly reminds us of the same lessons we've learned. True. And this is something we've shared before, I'm sure, is that what we see outside and what irritates us in the real world, in people that are around us, is a reflection of what you're unhappy with inside. Mm. And I think just that as a reminder, the more meta, realization is that there are just so many lessons in our lives that we need to constantly learn and relearn until we grow old or until we like get rid of like the attachment or the thing that is irritating us about ourselves and like realize it, acknowledge it and let it go. But until then it's, it's gonna be there. It's like the analogy of the layers of an onion. It's keep the, they're all there and you keep peeling and peeling and peeling until you get it from the core and you uproot it. Like if one person says something, it won't trigger everyone the same way, right? So you have to question, why did it trigger me? Yeah. Like if someone said that. But anyway, we all have like our own odds stacked against us yeah. that we kind of have to work through in life. So yes, constant reminders. Life is great that way, it isn't is. it? It is. So with that, we hope the eye cream video sheds light and makes it easier for you guys to determine yourself what you need. If you have any other questions, leave them below and we will see you in the next episode. Bye.